Welcome to Family Gamer TV. We're about to see our first hands-on sort of hands-on gameplay yep. with Skylanders Trap Team. We've got Lou Studdard. That's correct. Back again. Nice yes. to see you. Nice to see you as well, Andy. And so you've got some new levels, and we've got some new Skylanders here yeah. on the table, and we'll work through them. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to take you through the secret sewers of Supreme Stink, and then we're going to take you to the Skylanders Academy. Nice. All right, so we're going to start by bringing in our buddy here. This is Food Fight, and he is the core Skylander that you'll get uh, when you get the starter pack. And you can see he's an artichoke with a tomato launcher. Nice. Pretty good veggie stuff. He also has a zucchini gun as well. Uh, but what I really want to show you here are a number of the villains that I've brought that are, you know, kind of preloaded. I've gone through the game already. I've trapped them. And I wanted to show you some of these preloaded villains. And so we're going to start with an air villain here called Buzzerbeak. Buzzerbeak. Oh, nice, and the, um, so the portal makes that great noise. Yes, exactly. So whenever you send a Skylander, or I mean, you send one of the villains in, you'll actually hear them speak out of the, the, the portal itself, announcing their entrance, and you'll hear the audio transfer to the game. And so this is Buzzerbeak here. He's a small little bird with a propeller hat that can do pretty big damage. He can also fly and slam down to attack enemies. And of course, this is, this is the, um, the villain that we got to reveal. That's correct. On Monday. Yeah, exactly. So this is the Family Gamer TV villain here. And he will forever be called that. Yes. <laughs> and so one of the new things that we're revealing uh, at E3 this year is the kind of revised way that we're handling how the villains play with your Skylander. And so you'll see here there's actually a timer. And so what we've done is we've actually figured out that to support the play between your Skylander and the villains a lot better is we've made the villains stronger, but only available for use for a limited amount of time. And what that affords us to do is make them, you know, really strong, but then as a fun little aesthetic, <laughs> they can announce when they're ready to go, and then when they're ready to go, every single villain has their own specific theme music. Oh, nice, yeah. And so you can hear it really makes their, you know, entrance a lot of fun, really unique, and a ton of personality. You can see him running around, attacking enemies with his propeller hat, and doing a slam down attack as well before, inevitably, his time is up. So when, so when the time's up, then you have to switch back. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so the game will uh, send them back into the trap, and you can see the time refreshing as it goes on there. And so now what we're going to do is switch over to another villain, and this is one of my favorites. He's a life villain here, and by bringing him in, we're bringing in Broccoli Guy. Broccoli Guy. Oh, nice, nice name. Oh, you got the broccoli guy. And so this is Broccoli Guy. As you can tell, his theme music, very distinct. Uh, but what's really cool about Broccoli Guy is he's a support style villain. And he can actually put a healing glyph down on the ground. So when you switch back to your Skylander, you're getting healed. And so instead of just being all about attacks, the team's built out a whole bunch of varieties of these villains. And so you can imagine with Broccoli Guy playing in co-op, putting down that healing glyph, and then having your friend, in the midst of battle, get healed. So it's a great ability. Yeah, nice. And that's the way it sort of changes up the gameplay. Exactly. And it's really about you know making these guys support the Skylanders, but also support co-op play, and just support different interactions than we've had before. So you mentioned co-op play. So if two players are playing, how does that work in terms of switching to those villains? Yeah, so it's, it's really player preference. And so we have one trap slot with a villain in it. You can still play with two players. And it's just whoever wants to play as that villain can switch to it. Right, so one player switches in. But the one they've done that, the other player can't switch in at the same time. It's one at a time. That's correct. It's one at a time. And now if parents like yourself prefer Broccoli Guy, you know, for his, you know, healthy veggie aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, eat your greens. We, we, yeah, eat your greens. He's a veggie task force character along with Food Fight here. Uh, we have another character. This is a magic element character that might be a little bit something more for the kids. Hey, Yata. And so this is Peñata. Wow, it's amazing! <laughs> and he's one of my favorites, and he's a really excitable character. You can see he gets really excited just by running. He has his sucker, which he can use to attack. But perhaps best of all, he barfs candy. That's quite a skill. It is quite a skill, and it actually dazes enemies. Uh, <laughs> my, my son can do that sometimes as well. <laughs> <laughs> it depends how the, the Halloween goes. And so he can actually attack these smaller Peñatas, which he 
barfs out for a bigger explosion. Hyper and Riper! And you'll actually see they make comments if you try and send them in before their time is ready. Oh no, I'm still hanging. Ah, cute, nice. Yeah, so what we want to use is the, the portal and the personalities for these characters as often as we can throughout the experience to really, you know, enforce the magic that kids have performed, really making them feel like they've actually trapped one of these characters and there is something alive in the toy itself. Because the idea is that, you know, we've brought toys to life, now what we want to do is actually bring life to a toy. And so what was once a blank trap now actually has a villain in it. And so the number of traps, has that been announced yet? How many traps there were, will there be for trap team? Uh, we haven't announced the number of traps, but there will be you know, traps for each element. And then in each element, we have different sculpts. So I only have one of each here, but you can kind of see the variety of these sculpts. So you see kind of the jug head here. You can see my favorite's the, the log holder, magic one, and then a torch that we have for a fire. So even within these elements, we'll have a number of uh, various sculpts. Uh, that people will get to choose from uh, because we sell them individually but they're not blind packs. Uh, people will get to choose them on the shelf, say I specifically want a life trap with this sculpt on it. And so now we're going to progress forward through the level and I'm actually going to switch to one of the new uh, trap team members that we're, one of the trap masters that we're revealing for the first time here at E3. This is Jawbreaker. So I guess he's a guy. <laughs> this is a guy, yes. And so this is Jawbreaker, and you can see, uh, like all of our trap team, you know, trap members or trap masters here, uh, all of them have a unique Traptanium weapon. And so you'll see the shield here for Wildfire, the sword for Crypt King, the hammers for Wallop. But what's cool about Jawbreaker is that the Traptanium is actually his fists, and so he'll use that Traptanium to punch through any enemies. Like he's hiding goo chompies here. We gotta watch out when they'll attack. Um, but what's really cool about Jawbreaker is he's all about kind of his bursts of energy. So you'll see he moves at a pretty good pace here, but we can energize him up, doubling his speed and his attack energy. It also, you know, if it's if it's depleted, slows him down a bit. But what's really cool is that it actually augments his moves. So you'll see his base attack, he can do this kind of slam down, but if I energize him and try it out, we're going to wipe the floor and take out the enemy. Wow, yeah, because that's a big attack. Yeah. Now, so you talk about up, up, um, upgrading the trap masters there, but you can also upgrade the villains, is that right? So the way the villains will work is that they're not um, upgraded via XP or the gold that you'll collect. We have hidden throughout the game, for each of the villains, a specific quest. That if you can find it and complete it, you'll upgrade that villain. And so we wanted to make them handle completely differently than a Skylander. You know, even their upgrades are different. And when you're playing as a villain, any uh, XP or any gold that's collected feed back into your Skylander. And so here you'll see we've actually got this, this wall of goo blocking our way, which, when we get close to, kind of points to this platform. Now, one of the things that we've done to, you know, continue to add variety to this adventure, in addition to the combat, is kind of having some fun adventuring aspects. And so, to get past this goo, you'll see there's this platform here where if I walk against the arrows, nothing really happens. But if I actually follow them, like a faucet, I'm actually turning a spigot, which will turn off the goo coming from the pipes. Cute. So we can carry on going. Exactly. And so we can progress forward toward the entrance of the sewer, where you'll actually see a, uh, a fairly familiar Whoa, character. War. I don't know if you remember the little green goblins from the Lockmaster challenges in Skylander Spires Adventure and Skylander's Giants. Uh, yep. Well, the team at Toys for Bob has taken that character, brought him back for the lock puzzles, but has completely changed the way that the lock puzzles work. So before, you were tilting the room to get him to fly around. Uh, this time we've given him a jetpack, which is a pretty sweet upgrade. Jetpacks are always good, Jet whatever happens. Right. Exactly. And being that he's not the best pilot, if you point him in a direction, he will slam in that direction until he hits something. But what's really cool this year is that in co-op, there will actually be two goblins. And so because they each have their own uh, collision, you'll create your own solutions by bouncing off one another to find the exit. So you have to work together to solve it, is that right? Exactly. In co-op, you have to work together to solve it, and you're even able to find your own solutions that we may have not planned for, which is great. 
And so here you'll see we've got some fire in our path. If I touch it, I'm sent back to the beginning, so what we need to do is figure a way around it. And then in this instance, fire is surrounding us on all sides, except for some water that, if I pick it up, I'm able to progress back. And so you'll see the water actually doesn't hurt me any longer, and I can get to the exit, unlocking the door and allowing us entrance into the sewers. I also understand that Sky Stones is coming back as a minigame this year, is that right? So what we've got is a, uh, a brand new uh, style of Sky Stones that I'll actually show you later on that we're calling Sky Stone Smash. Sounds good, can't wait for that. Well, down That's here. impossible. What? But not the outsider. We hadn't seen anyone since we locked ourselves away during the great germ outbreak centuries ago. But lately, all these mutant monsters showed up and naturally confirmed our suspicion that the outside world was destroyed. Wait a minute. You may be carrying germs. You're unclean. Ah! <laughs> and so as we just heard from the uh, kind of crazy Gilman, You'll see that there's a number of enemies in the sewers, and that would be a great time to bring in another trapped villain. This is an undead character. We showed him a bit off in the reveal, but this is the first time that we're showing gameplay of him. Uh, this is an undead werewolf who uh, loves him some rock and roll uh, named Wolfgang. Wolfgang. And the portal there lights up as the um, villain talks. Yeah, it's actually timed uh, to their lip sync, which is really cool. Um, so now you can see I'm playing as Wolfgang here. He's got a harp guitar, which I can use to send out note projectiles. Uh, but my favorite move is his 80s hair metal style knee slide. Like a good rock and roll concert. Nice. He can slide through his enemies there. Defeating those chompies. The so then his time was out, and then it switches back exactly. to your Skylander. You're exactly. different somehow. In fact, there's something vaguely heroic about you. And you haven't tried to steal our green goo like the other mutants. But you're probably still crawling with germs! Ah! So there's a Wii version of the game still this year. That's correct. Um, and it, does that look, look, I mean, obviously not look identical, but in terms of features, it's, it's a yes. feature copy? That is correct. Yeah, it'll be the full game. Uh, you can use all your previous Skylanders, all the new Skylanders, as well as the villains trapping them and actually hearing them talk out of the portal as well. And so now what we're going to do is uh, head over to the Academy. And so this is actually a look at our hub world for the game this year. So I think we'll just pause there for a minute while Jawbreaker um, takes a little nap. And if you want to hear more from Lou about that hub world and the Academy, subscribe to Family Gamer TV and we'll be back with part two soon.